welcome to anyone watching. Um, today I'm going to be doing another dual video, this time um, with this General Marnik deck. Um, obviously an Eye of the Storm card here, and also I got Titan Collar as another Eye of the Storm card. Um, I guess the goal of this deck is ideally you just dump out a one drop, whether it be Prickleback or Horn Chameleon. Um, the ideal curve would be to play Drifting Toadstool, put something in mana, and then play turn 3 Marnik, and then your odds are pretty good to hit something huge. Um, and even if you whiff, you can probably get to spin the spin the wheel the following turn, or if you don't whiff, you get to spin the turn twice, spin the wheel twice in a row, which is pretty absurd. Um, obviously, if you don't draw Marnik, you're gonna be in a heap of trouble. You just deck is full of these big things, um, so you have Mana Storm to kind of uh, be your sort of backup plan in those games where you just kind of hit some land drops, uh, maybe accelerate a little bit with the Toadstool, and then. You just drop a huge mana storm and all of a sudden you're just dropping bombs every turn. Um, the deck is obviously not super strong. Uh, there's pretty much no defense in this deck outside of maybe a quick Caius against a deck that can't really remove it. But even a quick Caius is going to be pretty slow. So, I mean, despite what you might think, this deck is actually fares a little bit better against some like the, the rush decks even. Um, that might seem weird, but just when they're if they're so active at attacking your shields, um, Prickleback and Horn Chameleon can actually do a decent job contesting the early creatures that they put out. And I mean, when they're giving you a bunch of cards from your shields, you can more effectively and consistently find Marnik. And then you can actually, if you if you can find an Andromeda or a Caius or even just a Haven, like if you can, you can actually find Marnik more often, and you can actually kind of race them or drop a huge thing more frequently against those heavy attacking decks. So it's actually, despite the lack of defense, I would certain, you're probably not going to be a favorite, but it's actually a closer matchup than you might think um, when you actually play the games out. Um, that said, still kind of a crapshoot. This deck really struggles against anyone who likes to sit back and set up a big push. Um, Cause you're obviously, you're just going to be in those cases. You're probably just going to be, uh, if you don't have the Marnik, you're just going to end up drawing, putting a card in mana every turn until like turn 9 or 10. Ideally, you can even find a mana storm, but again, that plan is going to be really slow against someone who's just kind of sitting back, accumulating a board, and then just one-shots you because they know you don't have any defense. So there, there's some obvious errors with the deck. You could probably improve it by putting in some uh, defensive cards, but the thing is, like, how much are you really getting if you just throw three root traps or I don't know whatever you want to splash three arbiters if you splash something or maybe you don't want to splash a creature from Marnik but something like storm spark uh, you're not getting too much mileage you might as well just try to high roll and uh, that's what this deck does it actually fares pretty decent against even like especially the slower decks as well because when you're able to just kind of mana storm and then get up to those big things um, you can just you have so many more bombs than any other deck so it's kind of, it's best matchups are probably at like the polar ends of the spectrum. Like the other heavy decks, this card, or this deck can be a little bit better against. Um, and the other kind of, uh, or, and the low to the ground decks, this guy, this deck can more consistently operate on like the Marnik end of things. Um, but anything with disruption uh, can be pretty tricky. Like Mesmerize is something you don't want to see. Um, so... This deck, not really that great overall, but it's a fun deck, and um, we'll see how the matchup I played. I p was playing versus um, LED again, and he is playing, again, his Fire Dark Light Shadow Champion deck. Um, this is just a quick match we played, and I think it was kind of entertaining, so I figured I'd showcase uh, the matchup. Um, of note, I'd like to get some feedback as well on what kind of... Uh, how you like the presentation of these videos. I think uh, I know I'm probably going to be going a bit in depth and doing the kind of breakdown thing, but uh, I want to know it, it, if it feels better to watch the live versions that are recorded from my perspective. Um, I think those they're a lot harder to pull off, and I end up having to slow my pace down a lot when I'm playing, and it feels kind of disrespectful to my opponent. So um, it might not be the best for in in, in those terms. But uh, um, I, I feel like it, it does give you the kind of fun of watching the game unfold 
um, more so and from from the player's perspective. Um, so if you do enjoy that, let me know. Uh, if you just are fine with this kind of overhead view of things, um, let me know that as well. Um, if you want to see something else or have uh, other suggestions, uh, ideally for just playing on this program, I'm not really playing in person. I feel like that would be much, much harder to execute. But yeah, if you have any ideas, like maybe <clears throat> even just letting the game unfold, me speaking very little, I suppose you can just watch it with me muted if you wanted to do that. So I, I don't think that's really worth producing. I, I wouldn't really want to put out a video where it's just the match playing out. Um, but yeah, let me know your suggestions and how you feel. And from there, we'll just jump into the match. Obviously, I'm going to be playing on the top here as Colmes and LED is on the bottom. So I believe, I forget who who won the die roll this match, but uh, we'll see who likes to go first. I think LED, uh, uh, as, com as common for him to do, I think he probably would let me go first, whether or not, uh, oh, maybe I, I won the die roll and made him go first. Not, not really quite sure. I think this is a hand that wants to go second though, because um, I have the Toadstool, and I have this Titan Caller, like I have two creatures, I just want to make sure I can find my Marnik. And I'm pretty sure, I can't I, I can't remember if I knew for sure whether or not he was playing Fire Dark Light, but uh, I know a lot of his decks are on like the slower end of the spectrum, if not, so it would make sense to go second, which I believe is the case. Um, yeah, so he's just curving out, he's probably going to play, he may or may not play the Shield Wing, it, he doesn't probably know what I'm playing. Or I don't believe he knows what I'm playing, so he uh, he may yeah. So he elects not to cast a shield wing, which is fair. Um, you don't know if you really want to commit this two drop. You don't know how the game's going to develop. It may not be worth it. And he sees his Pegasus. And he doesn't really know what I'm playing. So I just make the obvious play. Just play the two drop. Dump something out. Uh, he draws nether tactician so we're already kind of seeing these combos coming together for him with the tactician and beacon drone so um from his perspective i think that it makes sense to do that and then he, now that i have this one or ten or one thousand power creature he might feel inclined to play the shield wing just to maybe content contest that i still don't know if that's a necessary play but it makes sense to do regardless um he can start setting up because with the, the tactician, the beacon drone, and the luminous shield wing all working together, he'll get close to being able to, like if he can just chip in for a shield next turn, then he can set up, uh, I believe, lethal the following turn. And uh, for me, uh, I'm just going to pray that this Titan Caller hits the Marnik. Um, I'm keeping the Horn Chameleon in my hand, of course, because in case he's able to remove one of these creatures, I can follow that up with Horn Chameleon plus Marnik to evolve. On whatever one's left over but I whiff and hit a Caius so now without Mana Storm and without Marnik I'm just praying for something good one of those two cards off the top of my deck and as we see here Colmes un or LED untaps plays probably I mean of course just gonna cast another tactician um, We'll see if he wants to break the shield. Uh, I don't believe... I, I don't think it would be likely that he would want to. Okay. As expected. Um, Andromeda. Not the great draw. Um, just another big thing. And this is a problem with the deck, is you just kind of draw a pass if you whiff. And there's Sasha. An interesting card that hasn't really... Never really saw too much play in Kaijudo, but it has a lot of cool words on it. Um, it's just a nice card. I think I played a bit with it when Clash first came out, but it just wasn't... I don't know, it just never ended up materializing. I, guess, I suppose it was too weak to Aqua Chaser and Finbar and cards like that. 
and again I'm just drawing passing but uh, with LEDs board position here he's basically just threatening lethal and as we know from my perspective uh, the only defensive shield blast you could argue is bottle of wishes um, which I'm very not likely to have so he's probably just going to be setting up So, I mean, it's pretty much just a done deal at this point. Again, praying for the one bottle of wishes, but not going to be likely to show up for me here. Oh, he attacks with the beacon drone, but that was just played. Um, if I remember correctly, I think I... Yeah, okay. So he ends up... Uh, I mean, it's still nothing I can do. There's going to be a tactician attack. Banishing the beacon drone, untapping, breaking one shield, attacking the next, and then he'll run that back by banishing his luminous shield wing to attack. And pretty much game at that point. So, again, the weakness of this deck for sure is going to be having your opponent just kind of set up those kind of combinations where they can kill you out of nowhere and without much defense to prevent against that it's really tough to deal um, so we'll jump into game two um, I have the choice I uh, will see if I elect to go first or second here um, this looks like a hand where I would want to go second um, I, if I can draw into a Marnik in my opening draws I can set up for the first for the turn three Marnik but if I if I draw a Marnik um, and if not, I kind of want to make use of my extra mana cards in hand. So I draw a Marnik. So now all I need is a light card, and I have kind of... I can play towards that turn three Marnik with this hand. Um, and again, it's important, kind of nice to go on the draw when you have these Drifting Toadstools. From his perspective, he has this Nether Tactician, which again, and the Beacon Drone, which we can... He can definitely play towards for those same kind of um, blowouts that he did in the previous game. And okay, so I draw a Marnik, so this is great for me. So I have the setup, and I don't think his deck really has any anything to contest. I'm going to have to put a Marnik in mana, which is probably fairly telling as to what's coming next. Um, I'm pretty, I'm like 99.9% .9 certain at this point that his deck doesn't include mem Mesmerize from what we've played so far. So here we go, untap. Throw down the Cassiopeia and Marta comes down and now I'm just kind of praying for something not terrible to come off and we see a Guardian, which is kind of a boring card. A card that I really I don't know. It this the way I constructed this deck, I could have put in you could put in any number of things. You could put in like um splash like both in furnaces is just a fire package, and furnace awaken and the emulator. They're just way more powerful cards. Um I elected to play like Caius and the Guardian. Um, the Guardian has some synergy with like Almighty Coloss Colossus and Haven, which is kind of nice. But I mean, Caius and Guardian are just kind of really mediocre cards. They're just giant things. They don't really do much beyond that. Um, but I, I don't know. I felt like it would be nice to have the consistency of the light mana cards and just making sure that you could guarantee to cast a Marnik. As we saw there, like. If I hadn't found a light card with Mar to cast my Marnik, I could have been my whole uh, plan could have been toast. So I just felt it really streamlined the deck. And unfortunately, oh no, what's going on? Oh, okay, I messed up. So we get two big bombs off in a row, and one of the benefits is I think his deck only really plays Terra Pit. So 
he's, he's going to need one of those to have a chance here, but Marnik just built up a huge board out of nowhere. So yeah, I mean by f turn 4 this is pretty crazy, but a lot had to go right for me to even get to this position. But yeah, nothing really he can do. And that is the game. He might try to, yeah, he tries to show show what he's got, but yeah. It's just a done deal. So that showed the power of the Marnik deck there where um, I mean, if, if things go your way and you draw, like, the the nuts, I mean, it's going to be pretty good. Uh, let's watch game three here and see how that unfolds. So he likes to put me first uh, with his choice. And again, okay, so he's already got the combo together, which is a, another important thing for him to look for. And he's probably just going to put this web leg or likely in the mana zone and ship it back to me. Oh, he puts the beacon drone. That's really interesting to me. I feel like this is a card you would really want to hold on to, especially when you have no pressing light cards that need to be cast. It's very surprising that he put that in mana. Yeah, that's a, that is a bit of a shock for me to see. Um, regardless, I continue playing my cards I don't put the Horn Chameleon into mana. I think at this point I'm so far away from a Marnik, given I don't have another cheap nature creature and I don't have the Marnik, that I elect to um, keep the Horn Chameleon in my hand because it's going to be more important to have access to this card as a mana than anything else. Um, here, even though I've assembled both, I still hold them both in my hand because obviously there's no way I can cast Marnik next turn. So if I do draw Marnik within the next two turns, I can always play one of these next turn and then evolve the Marnik the following one. Um, so we'll see. I mean, he's just going to likely cast his three drop that he's got. Yeah, we see the Culper. And then from my perspective, Play the chameleon, ship it back. I don't play it. Um, interesting. I wonder why. I'm interested by that. I feel like I should have just cast this toadstool um, and just put the Caius into mana. Or maybe. Yeah, that's a little weird for me to see. I'm not too sure why I would make that play. Um, even just playing the prickle back and then if I untap yeah I just feel like it's nice to have because I can play the toadstool if I if he attacks my shield and hits a marnik or something like that like I can discard I mean I think the reason was probably like if I lose the clash I don't want to have to discard um because this is going to be going in my mana but I don't know I would just discard this prickle back and then I don't know, that seems kind of weird to me. I don't know why I wouldn't have played the Toadstool there. He's going to be giving me extra cards in hand, and he's very not likely to win the Clash, given that like half my deck is giant, huge things. So I think that play makes very little, little sense. It would have been more important to just develop my mana a little bit further. And uh, if he loses a Clash, and if I get a Marnik off my shields or something like that, or even just draw a Marnik the following turn, I can evolve with Prickleback. So... Looking back, I'm really surprised I didn't uh, play that toadstool. I may be missing something here from my thought process back then, but uh, yeah, that's a bit surprising. And, oh, it's going a little fast. So I just mana storm, and I probably toadstool now, I would have to assume. Yeah, so... Over the development of this game, LED did draw another beacon drone. So it turns out, uh, as the game unfolded, he would have likely um, had to throw one down anyways to play this beacon drone. But, I mean, it could have gone differently where he drew another light card, like a Darkseer Jurlon or one of his Veil Stalkers or something like that. And he, was, he would have been able to play both of these and just almost assuredly win the game 
even if he doesn't know exactly how many or what uh, shield blasts I may be playing. It, it feels very likely if he was able to assemble two of these beacon drones, it would have been hard for me to do much. So yeah, I'm still kind of surprised he put the beacon drone down and didn't save it for later into the game, but regardless, um, he's looking in very good shape. Obviously, I think with, with this alone, he's already got the lethal set up, so... It ended up being paid off, but if this were another light card and not the second beacon drone, he wouldn't have been able to pull this off, and then I would have been able to untap with Achaeus. So, which would have been obviously very powerful on this board if I hopefully have something like an Andromeda in shields. So, I think that was a mistake. I think the one mistake that LED really made this game was putting the beacon drone in mana, but, uh, Outside of that, I mean, everything is fine, and I made a, a few mistakes as I touched on already myself. But, uh, yeah, we're just going to see this game pretty much, again, I'm just preying on the one bottle. Um, I don't know. Maybe there is an argument to be playing some more defensive cards, just because if it's coming down to the wire like this, where maybe I can untap and play some giant bomb that stabilizes me, it might be worth playing a few shield blasts that might buy me that extra turn some percentage of the time. But uh, even that remains to be to be seen. I don't know if that's even necessarily the case. But uh, yeah, that was a cool quick match where, I mean, we took turns just slapping each other around. Um, yeah, again, kind of going back to the deck here. Um, pretty streamlined. Uh, as you can see, it really hinges on actually drawing the Marnik. The Titan Caller can dig for it, but you're not always going to find it. Um, the Mana Storm is a really good bracket plan. As we saw almost there, it almost worked. If LED had whiffed on drawing that second Beacon Drone, we would have been in great shape to have just kind of stabilized with Achaeus and then maybe even further with some other big bombs to follow that up with. So Mana Storm really helps in the games where you do whiff on Marnik. Um, but all that said, I mean, it, it, the the strength of those kind of nether tactician combos really showed some of the weakness of this deck as well. So yeah, I think, like I like I touched on, I think the Caius and Akaltik are a bit medium of cards to get off Marnik in the mid game, but they do serve some nice kind of synergy roles with the big things and they help cast all your spells it's really nice to have the extra light mana and even nature mana so yeah i hope uh everyone watching enjoyed the video there it's just a quick match um and again uh, let me know your feedback on how you would like these videos pre presented um maybe i felt like in that video if you would have thought uh it would have been better for me to kind of just sit back and watch it unfold, maybe more kind of commentate to what has happened, um, or maybe just talk a bit about the plays rather than kind of going over absolutely everything or talking over the match if you feel that's what's happening. Um, like I said, I guess you could just mute it if you didn't want to hear the commentary and just wanted to watch the game unfold, but um, if you want the kind of analysis, then... I feel like that's what I offer and what I kind of want to offer. So that's the content I lean more towards making. So if you, but if you, again, if you have any feedback, um, let me know. And I'd love to hear what you guys um, have to say about it. Anyways, thanks for watching the video and I hope you'll uh, look out for the next one.